So uh, Masterworks was founded in 2017. Uh, the company was based on the idea that you can make art an investable asset class. So in 2017, uh, our business started catering primarily to self-directed investors. Uh, we took individual paintings. We would securitize those paintings by artists like Basquiat and Banksy and Warhol, a lot of the big names you're probably familiar with. We would securitize those paintings and make them investable to self-directed investors. We would fractionalize them so you could buy shares. And in more recent history, we actually launched an institutional side of our business. And our institutional business is going to be doing something similar, still investing in art, except it's going to do so through diversified art strategies. So you can make one allocation to a diversified art strategy and get broad exposure to a lot of different paintings that we uh, make available. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, there are actually, to our knowledge, not other companies that are uh, investing in art. Um, and it, it's sort of, it's really an extraordinary opportunity if you think about it, because, you know, just as an example, the private equity industry in the United States is $3.4 trillion in size. And there are more than 9,000 firms in the private equity space, okay? Yeah. Let's compare that to art. Art is a $1.7 trillion asset class. So it's half the size of US private equity. And how many firms are investing in the art market? basically one. And so from an opportunity perspective, it's hard to find something that's more attractive, right? How much alpha can private equity funds generate if there are 9,000 of them going after that same $3.4 trillion market? Let's compare that to us. We basically, when we look at the universe of art investments that are out there, there are opportunities all over the place. And at the moment, it doesn't seem like anyone's competing with us. And do you think that another company could necessarily do the same thing that you all are doing if they try? So um, I have no doubt that another company could at some point do what we are doing. The problem is that there is an enormous barrier to entry mm -hmm. that we created before any other company is gonna be able to do it. And the barrier to entry is basically as follows, and there's no exaggeration here. So one of the first projects that Masterworks had at its inception was basically to hire several dozen analysts, and their only focus was to go through thousands of auction catalogs. Many of them were in paper format, by the way. They would go page by page, and put every single transaction that has taken place in the art market going back decades in time, they took all of those transactions and they put them into a computer because believe it or not, all of the financial data that all of us in financial services take for granted for pretty much every other investment opportunity out there, that type of data is not readily available or accessible for the art market. And most people don't really ever think about it because they don't often think about investing in art. So we basically took all of that transaction data, put it into a computer. We built several indices that many financial institutions that you, uh, you would recognize, they now use our indices to conduct their own research on art as an asset class. So that's kind of a long-winded way of saying, if another institution down the line does want to start replicating what we're doing, step one would be creating that enormous database with 70 years worth of transactions. So that history. would put them more years behind because that's obviously like a time consuming Exactly, yeah. that also took several <laughs> years to do. So we've created quite a bit of a barrier to entry here. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, I, I think I mentioned this. So my background was always traditional investment management. Um, I spent many years at Goldman Sachs. I, before that, I spent years at Citigroup. So I researched, published, and traveled the country to give presentations on basically every asset class under the sun. What did I think was more attractive at one point in time, less attractive, whatever the case may be. And what never occurred to me after all of those years of doing that is that I had actually not researched every asset class under the sun. As it turns out, there was an enormous asset class that's $1.7 trillion in size that was sitting all around us, right? We all go to museums if we go on vacation, even if we don't go on vacation, we still visit museums. Art is something that's existed for centuries. It's all around us. And yet 99.9% of investors have never thought about investing in it. So for me, what's so attractive about the opportunity, let's compare it to all of the other asset classes that investors already know about, stocks, bonds, commodities, currency, all of those, right? 
basically all the asset classes in the world, you can kind of put them in two categories, broadly speaking. One category would be asset classes that have existed for a very long time and they have been invested in for a very long time or asset classes that have not been around for that long and by definition people have not been investing in them for that long. So the first category is things like stocks and bonds, so on and so forth. Second category would be something like crypto. But if you think about where art sits with those two categories, it's somewhere almost right in the middle because art has existed for centuries. In fact, if you think about it, it sort of predates most asset classes that we're all familiar with. So it's existed forever. And yet people have only started considering investing in it over the last few years, quite honestly, as Masterworks began to make art investable. Yeah. So it sort of sits in this interesting place where it should have been invested in a long time ago. It's almost like, you know, maybe there's an element of art by its nature being sort of something that you see in a museum or you, you take an art history class, but it, it doesn't necessarily have that natural investment element to it. Maybe that's a lot of the reason why investors haven't accessed it. But, you know, at this point, it's now that it's accessible, we think that it's a, it's a pretty attractive opportunity. Um, Since we basically built the indices that now many institutions are using to research art, I can tell you how art has behaved in past periods of inflation. Um, so just a little background. When most investors think about good hedges for inflation, there's sort of an automatic answer that pretty much any investor will give you, which is, oh, if you want to hedge against inflation, you buy gold. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that gold is actually a pretty good inflation hedge. So if you go back to uh, call it 1973 to about 1981, when inflation was running at over 9% in the US, the average calendar year return for gold was 31%. That is pretty attractive. So there's no question that gold can be a good hedge. But what 99.9% .9 of investors do not know is that art was actually up 33% during that period of time. So it's one of these things where, you know, there's such, I kind of find myself in this interesting position in my career now where, you know, so much of what I'm doing actually has this educational component to it. And because many investors haven't really ever had the data to even research art in the first place, I'm kind of finding myself in this position where, you know, I'm kind of educating on those straightforward nuances about the asset class. Like many investors know gold is good for inflation, but they don't know art is great for inflation. So I'm, you know, kind of trying to provide that information. So it is a good inflation. Art is, it's actually, it has one of the most uniquely uncorrelated correlation profiles that I've ever seen in my career. Um, and I guess for the purposes of here, I'm not going to go into a, sort of a, a long-winded oration here on the topic, but all I'll say is with pretty much any asset class that an investor is familiar with, the correlation profiles that they come across are usually, you find something that is a low correlation to some stuff, mm -hmm. but inevitably it's going to have a higher correlation to other stuff. Okay. That's just how it usually goes. But when you we took the data for art and we measured its correlation against pretty much every asset class that any investor would ever consider investing in, the correlation profile was consistently close to zero across the board. There was no oh, low correlation sometimes, but higher others. There was nothing along those lines. It is quite literally zero correlation across the board, no matter what you measure it to. So in terms of the question about what happens when you know markets are having a tough time yeah you can go back to the global financial crisis uh when stocks were down almost 40 percent uh the art market in the midst of the global financial crisis was down 25 percent so i also think by the way that that point i just made about art being down 25 percent it's critical to make because there is so much that's exciting and nuanced and interesting about art as an asset class that I worry at times that I'm kind of coming across as though I'm making it seem like art is the most perfect asset class that has no flaws. And for the sake of being objective, I would never make the claim that it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It does have challenging years. There's no question around it, just like every other asset Everything class. Does, yes. So. <laughs> and global financial crisis would be a good example when art overall was down 25%. That's a fair point. Because art, as now I think I've said several times, because it's an asset class that despite the fact that it's existed for so long, most people have never thought about it and mm -hmm. don't necessarily know a lot about it. I've tried to figure out, okay, 
if someone told me that they're going to give me like three to five seconds to summarize art as an asset class, how would I answer that question? And here's basically what I came up with. Take the performance profile of private equity, remove the element of leverage because there isn't any when you invest in art, and add the most unique correlation profile that you've ever seen. You take those three components and you've summarized art as an asset class. If I were to give a tiny bit more detail for private equity, what has its performance been over time? Mid-teens from a returns perspective, very similar for the art market. What has been the volatility for private equity, let's say over the last decade? It's been low teams, similar for the art market. So once again, you take private equity's performance, you remove the element of leverage, and you add the most unique correlation profile. That's art in a nutshell.